Well, it is that time of year where people are enjoying being out on the water or in backyards doing yard work. And Dr. Borchers is here with what you need to know to help keep you healthy. Good morning, Dr. Borchers. Good morning. And today we're talking about flesh eating bacteria, which sounds frightening. Tell us about that. It does sound frightening. Uh, flesh eating bacteria or necrotizing fasciitis. Um, it's not going around Kansas, which is good. That's good. Um, I thought we should talk about it though because I've had patients call saying, hey, we're going on vacation to Florida. Maybe we shouldn't. Should we cancel our trip? Um, it has really captured the national media and social media, this flesh eating bacteria problem. What causes it? So there are several strains of bacteria that can cause this. Now, when we're talking about the, the, the Gulf Coast waters, it's usually a, a species called Vibrio. Um, you know, it's found in those brackish waters where maybe the salt and fresh water meet. That species can um, tolerate the, the high salt loads in those waters. Um, you do occasionally um, read about cases that have occurred in fresh water. It's a different species, maybe an Aramonis species. Uh, uh, I think I recently read about a, a man in uh, Kentucky River and another one in northern Alabama River. So um, some fresh water, but generally we're talking about warm coastal waters. Okay, and what can we do to help keep ourselves safe from this? Yeah, so if you have uh, an open wound, you should probably stay out of the water, especially if you're one of those areas, uh, in one of those areas where cases have been reported. Um, if you've got to get in the water, make sure that wound is clean and then dried, and then make sure you've put a, a waterproof bandage over it. Um, the the disease is not terribly common, especially the one associated with swimming. Uh, the CDC, you know, estimates 10 to 20,000 cases a year, but um, it's only a small percentage of those associated with Vibrio from swimming in the uh, the waters in like the Gulf Coast. Um, the the people who have severe infections are generally those with maybe a compromised immune system. Maybe they have diabetes, um, chronic liver disease, chronic kidney disease, um, maybe cancer or recent cancer treatments. Certainly, if you're in one of those areas and you've got an underlying issue, open wounds, you might be best off staying out of the water. Now, can you get this outside of the water? You can. Now, um, necrotizing fasciitis is not something that is passed from person to person. You can get it outside of the water, but there's really no rhyme or reason to that. They're relatively random. Might be wounds, might be surgical wounds, might be minor trauma, um, but that's more often a strep A bacteria and closely related to the same strep that gives us strep throat. Okay, well, that sounds very frightening, but it, it's good to hear that it's not as common as we may think it is just because we hear about the headlines nationally. Right, right. It's not any more common than it has been in recent years, and it's not, you know, uh, going on a lot here in Kansas. Okay, wonderful. Well, useful information. Thank you so much, Dr. Borchers, for being here. We appreciate it.